Hello and welcome everyone. Mike Doloff at Inflow Communications here and I'm joined with Chris Mitchell, our CTO, and Alan Batt from MyTel. And so excited to be talking with you today about the My Voice Connect roadmap and updates. And we're going to turn it over to Alan in just a moment to get um, dive right into the meat of this. As you, just some housekeeping items, we'll record this. So if you have folks that want to um, get a recording of it because they couldn't attend it, we'll be able to get that out to them. Also use the Q&A um, capabilities here and go to webinar and we'll be monitoring that. Feel free to ask away and we'll try to keep an eye on those and address them as they come up. We'll also try to have a little time at the end to catch up on any we didn't get to. Um, just a quick plug for other upcoming webinars here. We've got a great one coming up. Um, I think it's next week, two weeks from now. Conversation analytics, really how is that helping organizations out, especially now with COVID-19 and, and remote employees um, working from home? What are your customers saying? Um, that's different. How can you help them? How can you help your employees who might be on the front line of answering customer service, tech support calls? And then also the new normal of work from home and remote employee enga enga enablement, looking at the tools and technologies around that that are really benefiting organizations right now. So by way of a really, really quick agenda, we're going to dive into the meat of My Voice Connect, um, focusing primarily on the UC PBX side of that which is what Alan will be driving. If we have some time, we'll spend a little more time on the MyCC business for Connect, and that's really the contact center piece, um, Q&A, and then we'll have a contact us slide if you don't have good contact info for us. So let's jump right in first with, um, we always get a couple folks on who aren't familiar with us, so just by way of a quick introduction to Inflow, we focus exclusively on UC and contact center technologies and solutions. Um, we're a short time Mitel Platinum Partner, um, uh, and have worked with Shortel Mitel for a long time. Chris Chris had like long shoulder length hair at the time when we started working with Shortel Mitel. It's been that long. And um, we've got employees and uh, customers spread all across the U.S. What we do is try to take all the insights and experiences of working with these customers and provide education and value, which is exactly what we're we're doing today. We want to give some insights into what Mitel's been working on on My Voice Connect. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna let Alan take over here and become the presenter. Alan, you should have rights now to share out and take it away. And as long as I press the unmute button, I'm, I'm good to go. <laughs> uh, let me just give you full screen and uh, And we'll get going. Um, okay, uh, thank you, Mike, for the introduction. Uh, uh, I'm the uh, product manager for the My Voice Connect platform. And uh, what I intend to do here is just kind of take you through uh, a little bit of where we are and uh, uh, mostly where we're going. Uh, I think I can say some uh, very positive things that I think we're all embracing at the moment. Um, I'll make a couple of comments on uh, my contact center business. Um, very brief because I think Mike will follow up with that later as uh, as he stated. But uh, first, I don't want to let this opportunity go to thank Mike for an opportunity to definitely dress up today in a polo shirt and uh, shave and uh, come to a meeting with clean hair. So I really appreciate that and I hope, uh, hope everybody else is doing the same. Uh, so without further ado, um, what I'd like to do to start with is just kind of set some context. Uh, we've really uh, covered quite a lot in the past 12 months with My Voice Connect. Uh, and where we were sort of 12, 18 months ago was a, a platform that I think was feeling a little bit of neglect uh, in all fairness. And uh, that uh, was kind of an ongoing pattern with Shortel's focus, uh, heavy focus on cloud deployments. And uh, even after the acquisition by Mitel, there continued to be a heavy focus on cloud. And I think uh, many partners, many customers, and uh, many of us inside Mitel were even feeling that uh, there wasn't uh, perhaps the focus on My Voice Connect that uh, was really justified by the uh, business that it represents. So uh, we've come a long way since then. Uh, My Voice Connect is absolutely an integral, important, critical, go forward platform for Mitel. And Mitel is uh, certainly putting its weight behind that. In 2019, we uh, effectively uh, split off, as I think you're aware, split into two divisions. We've come back together since then uh, in, in the last couple of months. But what it did give us an opportunity to do was create an R&D team 
that was exclusively focused on my voice connect, whereas previously we'd uh, kind of had to share designers for the uh, cloud side of the business as well as the, the premise side of, uh, of the connect business. And uh, this was building up a new team. Uh, they've really uh, done more than uh, punching above their weight over the past several months. And, uh, you know, we've, we've made a lot of progress on things. So looking forward to uh, 2020, the rest of this year and into the future, we're looking at a strengthened roadmap, uh, roadmap uh, with a focus on cloud applications, but definitely adding that to the premise platform. That's uh, that's very different from saying everybody should, should go to cloud. Um, strategically, we're looking to leverage uh, a cross-platform solution that involves uh, Mitel desk phones, uh, contact center applications, and uh, cloud link applications for uh, delivery of uh, a variety of applications. Uh, 2019 saw the delivery of 1807 SP2 in July. Uh, that delivered over 100 important fixes and uh, you know, really represented an important step in getting the new development team up to speed as well as uh, um, you know, correcting some challenges that we had with the, with the product starting to kind of right the ship and set us off on a good path. Uh, 19.1 that was delivered in October was the first release that was uh, that was delivered on a dedicated My Voice Connect software stream. Uh, again, delivered by the new engineering group and completely split off uh, and divorced from what used to be the common code base with My Cloud Connect. 19.1 introduced Mitel's flagship 6900 phones into the My Voice Connect portfolio. Um, in November, we launched the My Contact Center business for My Voice Connect and uh, uh, refined and improved the process for migrating uh, Shortel 14.2 to connect uh, for customers. That that process, as we initially, originally rolled it out, had been a little bit ragged, but we substantially refined it, defined it, documented it, uh, and are much, much more comfortable recommending that uh, customers proceed with that. Uh, just to review, your, uh, hopefully this is old news for most of you by now, but the uh, 6,900 phones that we've delivered were uh, introduced by Mitel, I guess, in about 2016, fall of 2016. And uh, it was seen as very important for us to bring those into the My Voice Connect uh, portfolio. So there's four enterprise-grade models, modern styling, exceptional HD audio, uh, color screens. Uh, the uh, executive model has a touchscreen, color touchscreen. And there's a rich set of accessories uh, that come with this, everything from uh, PKM modules or, or what in uh, short tail parlance we would refer to as the button box uh, that can be actually added on to three of the models, the top three of the four models. Uh, so that's even uh, uh, you know more, uh, more broadly applied than just the uh, BB424 on the IP485 phone. Wireless LAN adapters, uh, integrated decked headsets, cordless Bluetooth headphones, uh, and of course, wall mounts, things like that. So there's a good set of accessories for uh, for these phones. And uh, at this point, they support the full My Voice Connect feature set. Uh, they can be deployed in mixed environments with the 400 series phones. Uh, one of the cool features that these phones have is a, called a mobile link feature, which allows integration with your smartphone, it allows transferring of the audio from uh, the smartphone to the phone and integration of directory. So you kind of use your desk phone with all its good audio capabilities as uh, you know, kind of a souped up headset for your mobile phone. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. Quick summary there. Um, next two or three slides, just really high level on my voice, uh, or excuse me, my contact center business, uh, the integration of uh, which with uh, my voice connect was introduced last fall. Um, it provides a modern UI and a full suite of features for uh, multimodal communications, including chat, voice, email, and uh, managing all of that with reports and so on. Uh, it also has a lot of integrations in the areas of CRM, service management, workforce management, and uh, social applications. So I'll, uh, I'll leave that for Mike to say more later. Uh, what we've done this year so far, in February, we delivered 19.1 SP1, which was a fairly substantial service pack on top of 19.1. Uh, we delivered support for several miscellaneous uh, Mitel devices, a Mitel ATA. 
there's also a Streamline uh, product which uh, provides Ethernet over Twisted Pair if that's uh, relevant for your applications. If you have architectural constraints that make running uh, Ethernet cables difficult, you can uh, you can leverage the uh, the Streamline solution. Rather specialized, but it's uh, it's perfect for some uh, some applications. Wireless LAN adapter that was introduced as an accessory for the 6900 phones in 19.1 is made available for more general applications. So if you want to use it for hooking up a 400 series phone at home, uh, you can do that. Uh, it's really just a, a network, uh, you know, kind of an ethernet uh, network device, um, not really part of the P PBX environment. The other big thing we introduced was the 6970 as a generic SIP device. So this is a stepping stone to the ultimate solution that I'll say a little bit more on later. But uh, since the uh, discontinuation of the IP655 uh, conference phone or phone that uh, served as Shortel's uh, conference phone, uh, we've really been without a, a Mitel branded conference phone for the My Voice Connect uh, solution. So we had an opportunity to bring in the hardware, the 6970 hardware, uh, but operate it as a generic SIP device, which for a lot of people that gives them, you know, probably 98% of what they need in a conference room, something that takes and makes calls and has uh, the rich audio of a, a room filling conference phone. So it gets it in play. Um, we'll be delivering updates later in the year that will bring that uh, completely in family as a richly featured 6900 family device. Uh, Alan, real quick, anything to share on the difference between that and maybe a lot of folks are familiar with 60, 655 or other other devices previously? Any quick highlights on what yeah. this makes this one different? Yeah, so what makes this one different is that it is a Mitel branded device. It is a full-on conference phone. It uh, It comes with a couple of extension mics. In fact, those of you with sharp eyes will recognize those extension mics as being essentially the same hardware for the extension mics for the IP655. Um, this phone is absolutely a room filling conference room caliber device. Uh, it's, uh, uh, I, I think, um, prior to joining Shortel, I was with Polycom, so I like the fact that this looks like a conference phone. It doesn't look like a desk phone, which, uh, to me, it was always a little bit odd with the IP655 with its uh, front firing speaker. Uh, but this is a real genuine conference phone device. The, the closest approximation that I would give to this device in its current generic SIP form is, is like a Polycom conference phone. If you were to, to deploy a Polycom conference phone, you'd get pretty much the same experience. Um, later on, when we introduce the 6900 integrated firmware, this will become a device like the 6900 phones. It'll be much more like a like a 6940 um, optimized for the conference room. Uh, from a feature and function perspective, 19.1 SP1 introduced support for Windows Server 2019. Uh, several bug fixes, including starting to chip away at some security improvements that I'll talk a little bit more about. Uh, basically, uh, secure LDAP was introduced. That's something that uh, uh, Microsoft is kind of Microsoft is kind of imposing on the world that uh, integrating with Active Directory requires uh, implementation of secure LDAP, and, and we've delivered that. Uh, we also updated, uh, uh, sorry, uh, delivered updated Nginx libraries, um, and that's you know the web server component. So it's uh, it's a pretty important component to be up to date on. We we were lagging. Now we're now we're kind of up to date. Um, apologies before I leave this. Uh, we've also uh, kind of, I've associated with, with SP1, but we've just recently uh, introduced a repackaged UC30. From a functional perspective, it's really no different in an SBE environment, but in the factory, we are now uh, loading it up with not only the Windows operating system, but also the My Voice Connect software. So it pretty much arrives on the customer site as an appliance that is immediately ready for uh, uh, you know, for the customer specific configuration. So it's just a change to the packaging of that. Hey, real quick, Alan, just we had a question about um, Windows Server 2019 support, which it is supported on the SP1 there. Um, Chris Mitchell, for you, anything to note there from what feedback we've gotten, any nuances to Windows Server 2019 that you've seen from the field? 
Yeah, I know we, we have a couple of customers who are already testing, you know, testing on it. Uh, we haven't, you know, w and we're testing internally ourselves. We haven't started migrating customers to the 2019 server yet. We, you know, we, we typically start testing on it and it usually takes us about 60 days from when a new OS is out before we start recommending it for customers. So we do anticipate over the next few weeks of, of completing testing on it, you know, with a couple of, of test customers as well. And then we'll, we'll begin, you know, migration options for customers that are looking to get over to server 2019. So, so far so good. We haven't had any issues, you know, with, with migration testing and even new server spin up testing that we've been doing. Good, and hopefully uh, you won't find any issues. <laughs> okay, I'll uh, I'll move on. So yep. now I'll get a little bit more into uh, roadmap uh, things. So uh, the the focus for my Voice Connect platform uh, for the rest of 2020 and into 2021, and that's really about the the scope that I'll be talking about here. I'm not really talking about kind of the three, you know, the three year plan or the five year plan. Uh, I guess I would preface it just by saying that, like everybody, uh, we have been impacted by the COVID-19 uh, situation uh, for the most part. Uh, many pieces of MyTel are able to uh, be pretty much 100% productive from home. Uh, people like product managers get to call into meetings, no, di no different from normal. Um, but uh, we have engineering facilities where uh, everybody is required to remain at home and uh, even though, even in an engineering organization, we can do a tremendous amount remotely, there are still things that require us to get into the lab to test certain things and reconfigure certain things. And, uh, you know, we're, we're being a little bit hampered by that. So we're, we're doing a little bit of dodging and weaving. Uh, for the most part, we think we're, we're on track or minimally impacted, but depending on how long uh, lockdowns remain, uh, how difficult it is to get fully back to work, the, the situation could change. Uh, but strategically, uh, we're focused on a few things from a product and program perspective, um, very much focused on foundation improvements and security hardening. Um, and again, I'll, I'll say a little bit more about each of these in detail, but just, just you know, we're, we're aware that our security posture has gotten a little bit ragged and we're working very hard to correct that. Uh, we're also looking at a MITEL-oriented cloud application uh, uh, delivery, um, basically applications that uh, leverage cloud technologies. Uh, also, the devices portfolio synergies with the miscellaneous devices we introduced in 19.1 uh, SP1. Uh, we actually have uh, almost completed the work. There's still some more, some more devices we need to work on. And my voice connect feature enhancements, and that that could include the client, the platform, any number of things. Uh, we also have programs to encourage migration, uh, continuing to encourage that as much as we can. Uh, Speedway program that's the successor to what you may recognize as the Pathways program, and uh, we also have a fresh uh, a fresh offer for my team meetings. Uh, here's a big busy slide. Uh, the green boxes on the left are mostly what I've just talked about, the things that we've already delivered into early uh, 2020. And uh, the blue boxes in the middle are the things that are next up. So we are, you kind of see the arrow on that 19.1 SP, SP2 box and it lines up with that yellow dot because uh, um, we're uh, about to release SP2. Uh, we are still targeting our intended date of tomorrow. So this is uh, pretty hot news. Uh, we had a last minute development that might impose a couple of delay, a couple of days of delay on that. So it actually may not be uh, released until next week, but in general, uh, that's in good shape. The main thing that's in there, and I'll just talk about it here. I don't know if this is relevant for anybody on this call. Um, Mexico has uh, implemented a new national numbering plan, and that required us to uh, make some changes in the um, uh, dial plan handling within the switch. And we've also supplied an, uh, uh, kind of a, an, an adjunct um, application that helps handle um, call restrictions for certain types of mobile calls. Um, maybe nobody on this call has anything to do with Mexico. Obviously, if you're a customer based in Mexico, this is relevant, but it would also be relevant if you're a US organization that has uh, My Voice Connect locations in Mexico. 
this is something you'll have to take a look at. So I won't, won't belabor the point. Just uh, if Mexico is relevant to your business, then uh, then take note of the uh, the upcoming release notes and product bulletin on that. 19.2, uh, we also, uh, excuse me, sorry, SP2, we uh, took the opportunity to deliver some uh, additional bug fixes. Um, yeah, I think a lot of these are, are important. The release notes will have a list, but, uh, you know, things where we've had problems with uh, reboots, uh, phone reboots, and uh, audio issues and so on. Uh, importantly, there's a group of hunt group improvements. We know some customers have had problems with audio delays and other behavioral issues with hunt groups. We've retooled some of the SIP signaling uh, under the covers to make it more efficient. And uh, we believe the hunt group improvements that we're delivering here should see a, a very, very substantial improvement in uh, hunt group performance. If, uh, if uh, you've been running into any of those issues, uh, check that out. Uh, I'll go to the blue box below, which is the next release that we're working very hard on. Uh, that's 19.2. Uh, the heavy duty lifting or the heavy lifting in 19.2 is all about security hardening. Uh, we're delivering probably most importantly support for TLS 1.2. Uh, we have relied on 1.0 in the past, which uh, as I'm sure many of you are aware is considered to be, um, well, out of date. <laughs> Uh, to be blunt. So TLS 1.2 is what we'll be delivering. Uh, also improvements, uh, updates to uh, um, OpenSSH, uh, MySQL. Uh, we are uh, systematically going through source scanners and uh, port scanning tools, uh, things that are available out there, things uh, that reveal uh, broadly documented and recognized vulnerabilities. And we're going through a lot of those and knocking those back. So by the time we deliver 19.2, the uh, the security posture of the platform should be substantially better than it has been in recent years. Uh, there will be a little bit of work that we expect will be left over uh, for 19.3, but we're we're hoping to capture about 75, 80% of what we think needs doing in 19.2. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we're also uh, uh, enabling uh, the secure boot for Hyper-V deployments. Uh, right now, we have a driver that requires uh, kernel mode driver checking to be turned off to install it. And of course, that's not very secure. We recognize that, so we're correcting that. And finally, from a device perspective, uh, this is relevant to Europe only, so probably of no concern to anybody on this call. But uh, Mitel has a multi cell SIP deck offering, uh, very popular in Europe, it is available elsewhere. Uh, we'll be introducing it for support on My Voice Connect in Europe. That's important because uh, when we get comfortable with it in Europe, we do hope to uh, extend it to other markets like the United States and, and Canada. Um, I'll flip now to, to just above there, my team meetings. Um, we have, uh, um, I, I think, been uh, in, uh, incentivized, I guess, by the uh, COVID-19 to uh, um, offer a deal with my team meetings um, that will allow the sort of concurrent deployment of my team meetings with uh, my voice connect and uh, give people access to good uh, video conferencing capabilities and collaboration capabilities um, I, I don't have that in a colored box because I wouldn't characterize it as integration but sort of concurrent availability and uh, I'll say a little bit more about that later uh, 19.3, uh, plan for the end of the year, more security hardening, uh, delivery of the integrated 6970 and an additional low end 6900 phone, the 6905, very basic phone. Uh, also looking at introducing uh, integration with the CloudLink gateway and, uh, and a next gen single cell deck phone. So uh, for those of you who've uh, um, you know, been paying attention to various roadmap presentations made over the last probably 18 months or so. Uh, we've been talking about introducing Mitel's 112 decked single cell cordless phone. And um, for one reason or another, that's been pushed out and pushed out to the point where uh, we're really going to drop that, not going to introduce that any longer, but we will latch on to the next generation single cell phone that we uh, expect to deliver by the end of the year. Um, so that'll be great. And then as we look into 2021, 
uh, implementing 6900 teleworker solution. Uh, 6900 phones uh, can't be deployed as teleworker solutions today. Next generation mobile client, uh, cloud link chat, desktop client re redesign, uh, updating recording capability with SIPREC uh, support for trunk recording and uh, implementing voicemail auto attendant software on the ST voice switches. Hey, Alan, comment or question on the 6900 teleworker. Is that gonna be through Edge Gateway or is there a different modality you're looking at for that? Uh, for several months, we had been looking at one option uh, that we have now kind of been derailed from. So we're actually uh, considering additional options. It will not be Edge Gateway. That That's pretty much what I can say at this point. Okay. Um, it's uh, the, the exact solution is uh, has not been determined. Uh, we're exploring options uh, both internally and with third parties. And I think we're likely to end up with a third party uh, solution to implement this. Um, this is one thing that's, that's kind of been affected by, you know, staffing and we're kind of eager to get this out and we think this will give us our best best shot at it. So uh, not out of sight, out of mind, uh, definitely an important thing that we recognize we need to do, but we were, we were derailed from our plans that we've kind of been acting on over the past few months. Thanks. Uh, okay. Um, all right, I have several slides to just kind of, you know, drill down. I guess I've already kind of uh, mentioned a lot of these things, but we'll just quickly blast through these. So 6970 conference phone um, with the uh, uh, 19.3 release, uh, we will deliver fully a fully integrated version of the 6970. So it will change it from its current generic SIP implementation to a full-fledged 6900 family member. So we're pretty excited about that. It is optimized, the software for it is optimized for conference room use, but it leverages a great deal of what you can already see on the 6940. It's a you know big touchscreen device and uh, I think it's uh, I think it's going to be pretty cool and well received when we get that out. The good news is anybody who has deployed the SIP only version, it's just a software update to get it to the fully integrated version when we deliver that. And a picture on the right-hand side of the basic 6905 entry-level phone. Just really uh, helps establish uh, an offering at a lower price point. Uh, wireless deck phones, I talked about the SIP deck phones and the single cell deck. So uh, SIP deck is, um, is a multi-cell solution, uh, really aimed at manufacturing industrial environments, healthcare, hospitals, large retail operations. Uh, uh, that kind of deployment. It's, uh, you know, it's kind of a roaming, uh, you know, 200 users in a hospital moving around between floors and wards and hopping between cells. Um, the single cell solution you can think of as much more, much more like your conventional cordless phone, sort of a single base with uh, four or five handsets and, uh, you know, they can, they can move around uh, in a facility, for example, a small, small facility. And Alan, that, that'll give them the ability to like transfer a conference, you know, stuff like that, that they can do, you know, on a desk phone, yes. you know, that, a little bit easier because we, we've had a lot of customers deploy third party, you know, kind yep. of SIP, SIP Wi-Fi phones. But, you know, those are some of the issues sometimes just transferring conferencing isn't so, you know, uh, so easy to do. Yeah, um, I, I guess I, I guess I can add um, just to elaborate a little bit more is the contemplated implementation for these is that they will integrate. Um, much the way generic third-party SIP devices do. So in fact, we're not talking about tight MyVoice Connect integration of either of these uh, in their present form. Uh, someday we hope to achieve that. But initially, uh, the need that we're feeling is for a cordless solution and uh, delivering it even as a generic SIP uh, implementation, you know, fully supported. Um, that satisfies the vast bulk of the need. And so we feel it's important to at least deliver the uh, the solution. And uh, as you suggested, you know, this is Mitel, we'll test it, we'll support it. It's not a third, not a third party hit or miss solution. So it will be supported and, and it will provide all the basic sort of transfer conference uh, caller ID capabilities that you'd, that you'd expect, but it, but it won't be like a fully integrated 400 series phone. 
Okay, my team meetings. We talked about that. Uh, my team meetings is a is a pretty cool video and collaboration application that uh, Mitel is uh, is starting to roll out, and uh, it has a number of uh, features that are uh, attractive to people. Uh, again, uh, what we're talking about now is an opportunity to deploy this and use it beside My Voice Connect. It's not not really integrated in any way, um, but we have an offer uh, that you may be aware of and uh, Mike and company, uh, I'm sure you can provide lots of information, um, you know, based on uh, recent bulletins and notices and so on. But what we're basically offering is uh, a free month free trial for my team meetings. And if you request that before June 30th, you'll have uh, six months of a fairly nice uh, video and collaboration tool that you can use. Uh, obviously, a lot of the drive for this is trying to help people out who are being forced to work at home. This uh, this can be easily deployed. Okay, uh, this is an area that uh, we've we've probably talked about before. Uh, you may be familiar with the cloud link terminology. Uh, kind of comes and goes a little bit in terms of the specificity of of what we're doing. But uh, we now have a push for delivering uh, CloudLink gateway support with My Voice Connect uh, towards the end of the year. Now, this will be really uh, extremely basic uh, by the end of the year. Um, but the CloudLink gateway is uh, kind of a, a background technology that is going to pervade uh, Mitel. Its uh, support it will be supported across all of Mitel's platforms and will provide uh, a platform for application and integrations, uh, again, across the board uh, as, as, the, as the various platforms tie into it and uh, as the CloudLink gateway capabilities continue to be built out. So this is not really uh, a finished story, but it's the start of the story that we're, uh, we're aiming to put into play by the end of, uh, by the end of this year. Uh, one of the things that we think uh, we will be able to leverage it for is an initial integration with Microsoft Teams. Um, we get the request often. We've had a, a stronger integration between uh, My Voice Connect and, uh, uh, you know, pick your version, live communication server, office communication server, Skype, Skype for business, uh, missed one, Link. Uh, Microsoft keeps changing the name for it, but... Um, uh, what they've done is they've kind of taken away the APIs that we have used to integrate um, with the uh, telecommunications uh, capabilities in My Voice Connect. So it's not a question of we don't want to integrate or, you know, it's more a case of Microsoft's current posture has kind of prevented us from integrating in uh, in the way that we would like. And that's really been our story is it's kind of a shoulder shrug. You know, we, we'd love to keep the... Uh, uh, Skype for business thing going, but we really can't. Um, with the initial integration with Microsoft Teams, we expect to uh, be able to cross launch uh, my team meetings from Microsoft Teams. Uh, and that, uh, you know, is fairly lightweight. It's kind of a checkbox competitive uh, position. That's what competitors are, are doing. Uh, but increasingly, we expect to build up the integration of my teams with. Uh, excuse me, Microsoft Teams with uh, Mitel solutions. Uh, My Team Meetings is something that will be increasingly integrated through the CloudLink gateway that will uh, broaden the ability and uh, tighten the uh, tighten our ability to uh, uh, integrate, oh, let me say that a little bit differently, uh, improve our ability to tightly integrate with My Voice Connect from a video and collaboration perspective. So again, just, just scratching the surface by the end of this year, but into next year, I, I think you'll see uh, uh, more robust integrations being delivered. Uh, key one is, is also to give us cloud-based chat that will play into uh, next-gen mobile platforms and client chat and so on. And uh, uh, they, again, this is uh, something that's supported throughout Mitel. And please stay tuned for more details. This is uh, sort of uh, you know the messaging around this and uh, our intentions are still being tuned here. Uh, pretty picture here. I won't say a whole lot more about it except uh, the next generation mobile uh, mobile application 
uh, will be a cloud link based uh, offering uh, that will tie in uh, mobile phones with the uh, My Voice Connect platform. And uh, finally, some uh, core platform stuff. Uh, a few more words on the security improvements. Um, My Voice Connect was always designed to be a secure system. Uh, it's not like it was uh, overlooked to begin with, but inevitably what's happened here is it's a 20 year old product. Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of the security stuff was put in and not kept up to date. I mean, just to be completely blunt about that, we've not done as good a job keeping up with it as we, as we really should have. And that's something that we're actively correcting. Um, the secure software and practices are widely implemented throughout. Uh, in general, they're just a little bit out of date. Um, also, the way you deploy the system, most of the system and known vulnerabilities uh, in it are behind your firewall. So for the most part, we're not exposing a lot of vulnerabilities. And secure protocols are used for connections outside the firewall for uh, use with remote phones, for example. Uh, keeping security current is an ongoing activity. It's supposed to be just handled kind of behind the scenes within engineering. Uh, Mitel has a corporate product security team to oversee and assist. Uh, they work with and provide oversight to all of the different Mitel platforms. And so they're very much involved with My Voice Connect and are guiding uh, some of the work that we're doing and uh, keeping us honest. So. Um, you know, we're, we're uh, doing work in a number of areas, uh, implementing the latest security protocols, uh, making sure that we have the latest and best crypto suites for uh, any particular application, uh, updating uh, several open source libraries that we use in the product, uh, also some structural improvements. Uh, that's kind of a vague statement, but what it really means is trying to get away from HTTP and FTP, anonymous FTP, things like that, and instead implementing HTTPS uh, wherever possible. So just structurally improving it so that we, um, you know, progressively eliminate uh, any, any areas of uh, security weakness. And finally, going through lists of the known vulnerabilities. Uh, these are things that are identified by standard tools like uh, Nessus, uh, uh, Nessus and Qualys. Uh, we also use a tool called White Source for doing uh, source code scans that detects uh, out-of-date libraries and other, uh, um, you know, other vulnerabilities. Uh, bottom line is there are a lot of well-known published vulnerabilities that uh, that these tools reveal, and uh, uh, many of which we have in the product today, and we're, we're systematically going through those from critical to high to medium and, and knocking them back to uh, to uh, giving us a much you know much more comfortable security posture um, from a platform perspective uh, one thing that we have uh, constantly kicked down the road is delivery of a voicemail auto attendant capability for the ST voice switches uh, we continue to make available the SG90V as a solution where people need to deploy a, a you know, kind of a robust uh, branch uh, device that uh, is kind of survivable, survivable and has its own, uh, own voicemail auto attendant capabilities. Uh, we have not implemented that software on the ST voice switches yet, and that's, uh, that's still on deck. Um, not happening as quickly as we would like, but uh, but I think uh, by early 2021, we, we hope to have this in place so that we can finally move away from even the 90, the 90G, or excuse me, the 90V. Um, client improvements. Uh, we've got millions of endpoints out there, uh, lots and lots of users uh, using the Connect client, um, still a lot of people who are using 14.2 are using Communicator for Windows. Um, so we still have uh, some uh, improvements to make on the client. Uh, we have a number of fairly common requests. Uh, one broad category of requests kind of takes the form of, well, we could do this on Communicator, but we can't do it on the Connect client. So we're trying to uh, progressively tackle those. Uh, the approach that we're taking is is uh, is a two-pronged solution. We 
we feel there is a need to do a little bit of an overhaul of the Connect client. Um, not necessarily going to be a complete overhaul, but uh, you know some of the underlying libraries uh, that we rely on, we think we might swap out for more capable libraries that will let us uh, implement things like like docking, for example, which is a which is a popular request. Um, we will also increasingly leverage the CloudLink uh, technologies that I spoke about. And uh, this is a longer term effort. This is probably gonna play out throughout 2021. Uh, but at the same time, uh, in every release going forward, we're trying to knock off simple things that we can do, just targeted improvements that we can you know, gradually make an improvement on in, in each release. It might just be a handful in each release, but uh, hopefully, uh, uh, you know, hopefully they'll be useful and well received. Um, final thing I guess I'd like to talk about here is the migrations to 14.2. I don't know how many of you have taken the leap to My Voice Connect and how many of you are still on 14.2 or even older systems. Um, but we now, uh, you know, really need people to move to Connect. We're encouraging the migrations as much as we can. Uh, the 14.2 process has been uh, vetted, refined, simplified, fully tested. Our TAC engineers are familiar with it. Uh, it's it's much more routine and polished than it was when we first started doing it a couple of years ago. Uh, we have a new migration guide, checklists, uh, and programs to support uh, routine migrations and also the more complex migration scenarios. And uh, we, you know, all the all the people in Mitel that you'll talk to are are well equipped to support migrations at this point. And we urge anybody who hasn't migrated to please migrate. Uh, this slide is a little bit noisy, kind of a, a cut and paste. Um, there is material uh, that's been posted on our website for this. Uh, what you may have known as the Pathways program uh, that's been in play for the past uh, little while, past year or so, uh, has given way to an improved program that we're calling Speedway. Uh, from a My, My Voice Connective, uh, My Voice Connect perspective, uh, you know, there's some uh, fairly attractive opportunities here. Um, getting 50% uh, off uh, certain hardware voice switches if you migrate to My Voice Connect. Um, and uh, if you upgrade from SG voice switches, probably the big thing here is we'll give you equivalent virtual voice switch licenses for free. So if you want to uh, move away from uh, SG voice switch hardware and move towards a virtual deployment, uh, you know, still fully My Voice Connect, but uh, but a virtual uh, uh, an implementation of virtual phone switches and virtual trunk switches. Uh, we'll we'll give you all those licenses at no charge, um, and we also have basically other you know fairly significant discounts here. Uh, what you have to do to qualify for this is migrate to My Voice Connect. So uh, we're really really emphasizing these incentives, really trying really hard to encourage people to move away from 14.2 and My Voice Connect. And, you know, I'll, I'll just kind of just kind of pause at this point to just kind of say with everything that I've talked about that we've done over the past, you know, 12, 18 months and with the things that we're lined up with here, My Voice Connect is getting to be quite a distance from 14.2. So 14.2 is really starting to get old. And um, I think it's probably important to state at this point that for um, probably two or three years at this point, I think we first announced this in 2017 that we were going to end support for 14.2. Um, we've uh, pushed that date outwards uh, one or two times. Uh, it currently sits at September 30th and it will remain at September 30th. So come October 1st, uh, we will not be doing uh, well, I mean, let me pause. Not trying to uh, not trying to panic anyone here. You'll still be able to pick up the phone and call TAC. You'll still get the support that you're entitled to under um, under our support agreements. But we will not be delivering any uh, any more fixes or uh, anything on 14.2. So anything that needs to be fixed will have to be addressed on My Voice Connect, and uh, that is going to happen uh, October 1st. We spent uh, we've been spending a lot of time with folks talking through that too, um, Alan. As far as the connect migration, had a webinar yesterday. In fact, on that 14.2 to connect migration, I think a ton of folks are hopefully well aware. But yeah, there still are there's still a good yep. number of folks who are on 14.2. I need to 
Perfect. So yeah. I think uh, with the with the uh, ending of support for 14.2 and the incentives that we have to move to some form of uh, connect environment, uh, the exciting stuff that we have coming, the stability improvements that we're making. Uh, oh, I'm probably speaking about the slide I have in front here. Um, uh, Mitel's commitment to on-site. So just to you know, kind of summarize, modernizing the on-site platforms to extend their longevity. Uh, amplifying the on-site investments by consolidating applications into a single platform. Uh, you know, that's the CloudLink platform. Uh, we're looking at positive growth in the on-site market share. Um, you know, overall, it's not a growth market, but we think we're making some uh, really important uh, steps to saying we continue to take this seriously. We're reinvigorated with My Voice Connect and, uh, you know, premise in general, frankly. Uh, not at the expense of cloud, but um, you know certainly to treat uh, the you know the conventional premises market with the respect that it deserves, and uh, committed to supporting sensitive verticals that require security and uh, uh, the kinds of features and capabilities that only on-site deployments can offer. So uh, please migrate. Uh, so to summarize, My Voice Connect will continue to be a Mitel flagship on-site product. Uh, it's an important uh, platform within my, Mitel's portfolio. Uh, the strategic direction is to decouple applications from the PBX and focus them uh, on the CloudLink uh, platform. Uh, it'll make it easier to uh, promote smooth migrations and uh, tighter integration with the uh, collaboration video and uh, you know other applications and integrations that people expect these days. Uh, the roadmap features uh, continue enhancements to the uh, connect endpoints, uh, contact center, and I guess I got to leave some time for Mike to catch up with that. I'm going long here. Uh, mobility and just uh, generally the overall user experience. Uh, new resources and processes have greatly enhanced the migration experience from 14.2 to connect. Now is the perfect time to migrate if you haven't done so already. You can do so with uh, confidence that uh, it's, a, it's a good move. And I think with that, I can uh, wrap up. So Mike, apologies, I went long, uh, but back to you. Yeah, you bet, nope, that's great. Um, I'm gonna share up my screen just here as we wrap up. The uh, screen should be sharing. You see that, Alan? Yep. Q&A, perfect. I think we addressed the questions that had come up, but if there's any burning hot ones now that we haven't addressed, now is the right time. I'll give it a second here. Um, I won't dive into the MyCC conversation, which is really a deeper conversation around what's the future of um, Connect Contact Center, uh, previously known as Enterprise Contact Center, and what's that plan look like going forward. So uh, Alan touched on a little bit. We've done presentations in the past, and we've got those on demand, and we certainly will be happy to do kind of a one-on-one, -on -one, and we'll be doing some future webinars talking about MyCC. But a lot of advance, advancements there around the contact center capabilities for your My Voice Connect system and um, programs and and benefits of basically your licensing and investment in ECC of moving into a, uh, the MyCC platform, which is really the go forward flagship Mitel contact center solution. So won't dive into it. I don't think we've got any other questions here that popped in in the last minute. Chris, any, Mitchell, anything you wanted to add? Uh, no, I don't think so. So, yeah, just just one thing for me, Mike. I just I'm down. just taking a quick look at the questions that were 2019. So just again for the removal of ambiguity, 19. Uh, Windows Server 2019. Uh, I'm talking around myself here. Windows Server 2019 support was introduced in 19.1 SP1. Yep, which was February, February. timeframe. Yep. Yeah, February. Great. Ton of resources on this. Um, we'll we'll be able to kind of get updates with Alan and team as the year progresses. So we'll keep posted on updates and progress as the uh, future starts keeps unfolding here. Um, but if you've got any questions in the meantime, get in touch. You got our contact information on the slide. Happy to have conversations further specific to your environment. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Sorry we ran a bit long, but uh, hopefully got some good insights relative relative to your environment. So Alan, thank you for joining as well. Thank you, Chris. We'll wrap up here, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks. Be safe.